Go for the pulse and the pools. Go for the oohs and the ahs. Go for the bubbles and the bubbly. Go for the story and the stories. Go for the win. Go to Ocean Casino Resort. Book your trip at theoceanac.com. Welcome, welcome, welcome back to another edition of Football 24-7. I am joined by the man, the myth, the legend, John McMullen, one of the best Eagles reporters in the city of Philadelphia, in the tri-state, probably yeah. on the East Coast, my man. How are you? Tough day. I got are, uh, John, are you you're the hardest right working man in football from Brian Lippincott. <laughs> yeah. so I, I like that. I like that. I, 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 I would definitely say so. I mean, you... Certainly today. Certainly oh, yeah, today. of course, man. All the news is flying in fast, right? <clears throat> yeah, man. Uh, first day is always crazy. Uh, how we warned you this day was coming and it came and it keeps coming. Andre Dillard, Marcus Epps being the latest, uh, to bleed the nest, so to speak. Uh, but, um, you know, as I said, uh, this is part of the process. This is why it was disappointing the Super Bowl so much, uh, you know, that was my take when the Eagles lost that game because I knew this day was coming. And when free agency started, they were going to lose a bunch of players. And here we are. Now it's about trying to get C.J. Gardner-Johnson back. Maybe James Bradbury. Maybe the market's not developing the way those two players had hoped, and maybe the Eagles can get him back. But, yeah, it's kind of a bloodletting so far. Yeah, you said something really key, Um, the fact that, Harvey Roseman knew this day was coming. I think we all should have anticipated the fact that you brought in a lot of these guys on one-year deals. Uh, you traded for some guys. Um, you gave up some draft capital to get certain guys, you know, you know, like a Robert Quinn and uh, so on and so forth. It's like, you know, it's hard to kind of pretend like this wasn't already written. Um, and, 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 and that's, that's kind of where I want to start first. Um, you know, we're going to get into Javon Hargrave and we're going to get into uh, TJ Edwards, Dillard, Marcus Epps, you know, the details of that. But, you know, I feel like, and I've been keeping close tabs on this, John. I believe some, and I'm, I'm, the key word is some, I believe some Eagles fans truly underestimated what this offseason was going to look like and what this 2023 team um, potentially will look like. You know, what's your thoughts on that? Um, Well, I, I can't speak to everyone, but, yeah, it was always going to be difficult from the standpoint of, you know, leverage and so many players had career seasons and it was you know the eagles are very disciplined and i give them credit for that uh typically because you can't you know fall in love with a career season you got to be very honest with your evaluations um you got to be and it's difficult because you know there's certain aspects you know career years are called career years for a reason um it generally means that's your apex now sometimes it isn't and that's where you have to trust your football people and if guys keep getting better and better and better you know you have to be able to identify that and that's where the eagles generally you know they like paying the guys coming off the first you know rookie deal into their second deal rather than guys you know past the age of 30, Javon Hargrave. Look, really, really good player. Got twenty over $20 million a year, $21 million average annual value from the 49ers. You know, short term, that might really work for San, we took, San Francisco is the number one defense in the NFL. Uh, and, you know, they had Nick Bosa and Eric Armstead, and now they have Javon Hargrave and, it looks good on paper, but you know, by the time that deal is over, Javon's going to be closing in on 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 33, 34, and you're going to be paying him, you know, absorbent sums. Now, 
as we know, NFL contracts, you can usually get out of them after the second year. But the Eagles have to pay the price a little bit from going all in, so to speak. And they went all in and they came up just short. So that's the disappointing part of, of Super Bowl 57. Yeah, you're seeing all these contracts being thrown around. Like you said, Javon Hargrave, uh, four years, 84 million, 40 million guaranteed, <clears throat> an average of 21 million uh, per year. TJ Edwards gets picked up by the Bears. Um, I know a lot of people thought TJ Edwards would be a player that they could potentially bring back, depending on how the market would heat up for him. But I mean, I'll be honest, I didn't necessarily anticipate TJ Edwards to be a day one guy. I thought maybe day two. <clears throat> Oh, I thought, I thought I, I, TJ was always going to be a day one guy, but TJ, um, TJ is the one guy, ironically, he, he signed, uh, first, I think he, I had it at 16, might've been 15 minutes in. Yeah. Um, there was talk that TJ might get 10 million a year. That's the one deal I look at and say, wow, the Bears got him at a cheap rate. If you would have told me that number before uh, the Bears signed him. Now, he's from uh, Illinois. He's from the Chicago area. Uh, so he's a fan of the Bears uh, growing up and all that. But it was a three-year deal for $19.5 million, $12 million guaranteed. If you told me that before free agency, I would have said, well, he's coming back to the Eagles. The Eagles will give him that. So um, well, well, what do you think the, what do you think the disconnect was then? If, if that contract seems so feasible for Philadelphia? Uh, they don't pay all ball linebackers. Just another indication. They don't believe in paying that position. You know, it's another sort of tea leave that Miles Sanders isn't coming back, no matter what the number is. Um there are certain positions they're not going to pay. Whereas okay. the Bears, you know, you add in uh, Edwards for Buffalo, they paid $100 million to all ball linebackers today. You know, so the Bears win. I was talking about them this morning on the show. Jody and I disagree. But so March 13th, the Bears win March 13th. They ain't winning in September, October, and November because you don't pay $100 million to all fall linebackers. That's just dumb. But everything's individual. You know, Edwards, that's a bad deal. TJ, that's a good deal because it's a bargain. Um, I thought the Eagles would have – if you would have told me the number was that low, I would have said the Eagles, the Eagles bite. But they didn't even bite with the number that low, so which just tells clarify, you what they feel you're... about the position. So just to clarify, you're saying the T.J. Edwards deal for for Chicago is a good one. The Tremont, the Tremaine Edwards one, oh, or Edmonds, that's, Ed, Edmonds. That's a that's a rough deal for you. Terrible deal. Terrible deal. Good player. Terrible deal. I mean, they just overpaid to a ludicrous degree. Now sometimes you have to. That's one of those things. You know, it's a bad team coming off a bad season. It's in Illinois where the taxes are higher. People don't. You know, understand that the the Florida franchises, the Texas brand, they have an advantage because, you know, um, when you make that much money, you don't like a bunch of it being taken out before you can use it. So, um, teams in Illinois and New York and Philadelphia and Minnesota and California, they have to pay a little bit more because of the tax situations. It's one of those sort of hidden advantages. Um, but boy, I, yeah, I, like I said, that's the, everybody else, every other deal, um, that ex Eagles players got today, I would have said, well, the Eagles aren't matching that, but the TJ deal, I thought he was going to get more than that. He got much less and they still said no, Which tells you what they think of the position. True. But you know, TJ had some value. I mean, to this team, if you ask me, I mean, he was kind of the, you know, the the maestro back there. I mean, I, I felt like his value was was, was seen clearly <clears throat> this season. Um, but I guess the Eagles just didn't see it that way. Well, he had a great season. That's part of it as well. Was it a? Can he get better uh, on on from that? Maybe the Eagles feel he can't. Maybe the Eagles feel he topped out. You know, we talk about that undrafted pedigree all the time. That's hard to overcome. 
Uh, TJ still got a chip on his shoulder. Obviously, you know, he was graded as the sixth best, sixth best all ball linebacker in, in, in football uh, by pro football focus. Number six in the entire league. And that's the contract he got. Other than his you, pedigree, why? I don't know. Do you think I, it may potentially have something to do with uh, the new DC showing Desai? Maybe that's not a player that he feels that he may need. It's possible, but, you know, he plays a similar scheme. Um, okay. I don't know how much, how much, uh, how much film he's watched of, of TJ yet. But, but, you know, and, and Edwards is a great player. Don't get me wrong. But here's an example. Edwards, you know, I just said TJ was the sixth graded uh off-ball linebacker. Edwards was number five. He was number five. TJ was number six. One guy got 75 million. One guy got 20 million. What's the difference? Pedigree. Wow. Man. So yeah, let's um let's move forward. You know, we discussed Hargrave, Edwards. They lost Andre Dillard and they lost Marcus Epps. Now, I we obviously knew Andre Dillard was not going to be here. Obviously, his contract was up. But what are the Titans getting in Andre Dillard? And also, when it comes to Marcus Epps, what are the Eagles losing? You know, because he's another guy <laughs> I thought that they would maybe be able to bring back. But again, money talks. Um. Yeah. Well, you know, I I thought Marcus was an either or player as I described, if you can't get CJ back, you try to get Marcus back. Marcus surprisingly is off the board first, um, which kind of, I think is a positive for the Eagles uh, trying to get CJ Gardner Johnson, because that tells me his market is not quite where he thought it was going to be. If it was, he'd be off the board. Um, And I think that's very, that's a very good sign for the Eagles. Um, If they lose them both, then you got some real issues. Um, So I think they're, they're working pretty hard to get CJ done and we'll see how it shakes out. But, you know, so uh, Jesse Bates got 16 million a year. Obviously CJ is not going near that. Um, The, the franchise tag number that the Eagles wouldn't use was 14.46. Um, now they didn't use it just because of the number. They don't like using the franchise tag in general because they don't want that all on the cap in one year. So it's more than just the number, but he's not getting 14.46, uh, long story short. So if he's in that 11, 12 range, I think the Eagles can, can bring him back and get it done. And it looks like he's going to be in that range. So that to me is a positive. By the Eagles not really making a strong push for Marcus Epps, does, <clears throat> is that all indications to show that they're making, they're pushing all their chips in the CJ Garner Johnson basket? Yeah, it, it's 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 certainly a sign, um, you know. But they're not going to overpay. They're just not. They're disciplined and. They're going to stay disciplined, um, and that's that's usually a positive. Um, sometimes you have to overpay for a player in a certain situation, but you know there'll be there'll be other ways. You know, everybody overreacts the first day, first two days of free agency. Everybody, they did it last year. They'll do it again this year. Um, how we got CJ last year on August thirtieth trade. Who's to say he's not going to make another trade late in August? Um, maybe at draft time when he got A.J. Brown. Um, they're going to have to find, obviously, at least one safety, even if you have tremendous competence in Reed Blankenship. If you lose both, you got to find a safety somewhere, and he'll find it, but it won't necessarily be overpaying C.J. Gardner-Johnson. They have a number with CJ. I can't tell you what it is, but they have a number. And if they can get to that number, they will re-sign him. If it goes above that, just like Marcus Williams last year, they'll say, all right, good luck. 
we're going to go in a different direction. You said something really fascinating earlier. The fact that, and it's so funny because before we, before we went live, you made me aware that Marcus Epps just got signed and that, you know, surprised me. Right. But you said something really interesting with the fact that Bates got his money. Right. And initially before I knew about Epps' contract that made at least in my opinion, CJ Garner Johnson seemed like a far cry. Uh, Bates getting 16 million. I'm thinking to myself, CJ is probably going to get maybe 13, 14 if Bates got 16. But then you see Marcus Epps get essentially 6 million per year, which kind of puts a dent in CJ Garner Johnson's market because people that clearly the Raiders skipped over him and said, I'm going to find a cheaper guy here. So, like you said, CJ's market isn't necessarily starting to pan out the way he sees it. So I know you can't necessarily really speak on or you're not really too privy to what the number they're looking for. But what do you think, if you were the GM, if you were Harry Roseman, what do you think is a feasible number, a number that you feel comfortable paying C.J. Gardner-Johnson? If you're um, in the privacy. I'd be at 11, uh, 11 million average annual value. But the, the more important number is the guaranteed money. But, uh, you know, for everyone's purposes, I I don't think could they maybe push it to twelve? Maybe I look at Marcus got twelve last year and they bailed, um, and they think he's a better player. I'm pretty confident in saying that. Certainly a more well-rounded player. CJ made a lot of splash plays, um, so I don't think they want to go much above that number. Now, built in, you know, every year it gets a little bit more, a little bit more. But I don't think Marcus has much to do. Remember, not every team's in the same cir- same situation. Correct. You can't just pay top of the market at every position. Um, CJ is going to be top of the market at the safety position. Not Bates level, but he's going to be in that second, third, fourth conversation, top of the market. Marcus is more of a value uh, uh, signing and those happen too. You see him, you know, our old friend Hassan Ridgeway uh, got a one year deal for four million. So there are different levels. Not everybody on the first day is looking for the splash signing, you know, for, for the Raiders, you know, they went out and got a quarterback. So obviously that's going to limit some of the other spending. Um, Correct. And and they got, you know, what they think is a a value signing. And, you know, Marcus, man, he was started every game, 20 games, played almost every snap, 99% of the snaps. There's another guy who's, you know, not a great player, just a good, solid, steady player. And it's 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 a loss. It's a loss. Yeah. You like you guys are locked in on football 24-7 with John McMullen. I'm your guy, Tone. This show's the second. Trust me, we're going to get to some good news here. <laughs> Don't worry, you guys. We're going to get to something positive pretty soon. Um, but there's something I still want to touch on with John um, that isn't really um, shining too bright in my eyes when you really put it into perspective. Um, John, let's be, let's be honest about this thing here. Um, Fletcher Cox is still unsigned. Um, they lost Marcus Epps, and C.J. Gardner-Johnson is still unsigned. Um, they lost T.J. Edwards. Kaiser White is still unsigned. Um, James Bradbury is still unsigned. Darius Slay potentially may be traded. There's a chance that the Philadelphia Eagles could lose two starting DTs, two starting corners, two starting safeties, and two starting linebackers in one offseason. Have you ever seen anything like that before? Well, uh, probably, I mean – I'd have to think about it. Uh, certainly not from such a successful team. Um, but, you know, part of the success was, um, you know, the one-year deals and and everybody having a career season and how he didn't have a ton of leverage in season to get extensions done. Um, you know, what do you do? Javon, like, Javon Hargrave, all right, it's the biggest. Now, I was talking to a general manager over the weekend. He gave me the number. He was dead on. He said twenty million. You got twenty one. Uh, so he kind of knew the market. Look, that is a good player. Is he a twenty one million dollar a year player? 
I, I, I don't think so. Twenty plus million for a D tackle is scary. I don't know if I feel comfortable doing that. Is it? And people say Deron Payne got twenty. Is Javon Hargrave Deron Payne? Take off the Eagles' glasses for a minute. And, and Deron is younger. Yeah, I mean, I you know I have no problem with the Eagles saying you know what, thanks. You had a great three seasons. Um, you got a great deal. You know, he's got to do obviously what's best for him and his family. Nice guy, tremendous yeah. guy. Congratulations but, to him for sure. Yeah, I can't I can't pay that. I, I don't have a problem with that. Um, TJ, I got a problem with. I got a big problem with. I I think, you know, the Eagles are too um stubborn too at times. Not in in the case of of that, I think it's stubborn. I think mm. Look, I agree with them that all ball linebacker isn't as important as most other positions. But that doesn't mean you turn your back on good players because you don't value the position. If you luck into a good player, I don't want to say they lucked in because they developed TJ, but he turned into a good player. You don't have to break the bank for him. That to me is being too you know, slavish to your um, sentiments and, and mentality of, wow, we just don't pay off all linebackers. Do you think they so anybody anything? talking about, so anybody talking about the Eagles taking a linebacker in the first round, not that they are this year, but every year we get that question, they ain't doing it. I mean, they don't, they just, they just had a good linebacker and they wouldn't even give them 7 million bucks. I mean, are you aware if they made him an offer at all? I mean, again, like like you said, this seeing the number that he got, it, it, it begs the question, at in, like in negotiations with the Eagles, did he get disrespected in some way um, with the number? It, it, it makes you wonder that because, again, the, the number seems feasible. I don't know. A lot of people, you know, he is from Chicago. Not He's about 50 miles north, but, you know, from the area. Uh, so... You know, he was a Bears fan growing up. But this is his second contract. This is his first chance to make big money. A lot of people, well, maybe he just wanted to pay in Chicago, play in Chicago. Well, yeah, but we're even, we're even, you know, a couple hundred grand less. All right, I might buy that. But if you go up there and say, ah, oh, we'll give you eight million bucks, I he's not turning that down. He's not. Yeah. So to me, it says the Eagles didn't think he was good enough for that number. Wow. I, I don't know. The player I saw last year was, but they don't, you know, maybe they're closer to him than anybody else. Maybe they think he topped out. He's never going to have a better season than that. Maybe they think that much about N'Kobe Dean. Remember, that's part of it as well. Um. Maybe they think Nicobe can't play weak side linebacker. Maybe they think he needs to play Mike linebacker. All this can factor into it. Maybe Nicobe ends up being a better player. I know Jody Mack thinks he's going to be the greatest, you know, middle linebacker since Dick Butkus, but um, maybe all of that comes to fruition. Um, I don't know. That was a good player. All I know is he went out and he played well, week after week after week. Yeah, I want to shift to some um, some better news. Um, and then we're going to begin to close the show, John. Uh, once again, you guys are locked in on football 24-7 with John McMullen. I'm your guy, Tone. The show's the second. Continue to smash that like button, you guys. Continue to share the content. Make sure you guys are subscribed to the Jacob Sports YouTube channel. Also, make sure you guys check out John McMullen's writing, his articles on jacobsports.com uh, we really appreciate all the work he does for jacob sports man he's a grinder and uh he like like he said and like you got like you guys said in the chat he's one of the hardest working men uh in the tri-state when it comes to covering the nfl and your philadelphia eagles um john brandon graham is back one year deal uh and most notably jason kelsey announced that he will not be retiring uh this year or this season and he will be back for another another run uh, at Las Vegas at the Lombardi Trophy with the Philadelphia Eagles. So, um, what you know, what were your instant thoughts on uh, Brandon Graham coming back and then Jason Kelsey coming back as well? Um, well, Brandon, 
uh, didn't surprise me at all. You know, he's been nice uh, guy, by the way. Met him in person at, at the Maxwell Awards. Very wow. nice guy. Nicest guy in the world. I, I think Brandon is just ridiculous, almost to the point of, uh, you know, <laughs> I, I, I don't, I'll, be, I'll be honest, John. It, I, it, I felt like it, I was talking to a family member. I'm being honest. <laughs> yeah. It, 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 if you don't like Brandon Graham, there's something wrong with you. And if, if Brandon doesn't like you, there's something wrong with you because he gets along with everybody. But yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, he's been very honest that he wants to play 15 seasons. He wants to play them all in Philadelphia. And if there was anybody who was going to take a team-friendly deal was Brandon Graham, and that's what happened. So that didn't surprise me at all. Um, Jason – Kind of knew he wanted to come back uh, by the end of last season. Remember, he came into the season saying it would be his last. Uh, he told Lane that uh, and, you know, had so much fun. They had so much success. He, had, he played great again, all pro season, was relatively healthy, although he, he will say was more banged up than, you know, people realized. But nonetheless... Wow. As long as his wife said it's okay, you can play. He was going to come back and play. <laughs> Isn't that normal um, how it goes? Whatever wife yeah, he says goes, much. right? I think you and I both know that well. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, you know, that's what happened. And he let Howie know out in Indianapolis, which I kind of speculated on as well. Um, so Howie's known for a while so he could plan for free agency. And, you know, the domino there hasn't happened yet, but. Uh, Isaac Sayamalo is probably gone. And then, then you have Cam Jurgens sort of stepping in at right guard um, and then potentially moving over when whenever Jason does call it quits. But, um, yeah, I mean, the Eagles, you go back to the 2022 draft and, you know, they were all luxury picks. Jordan Davis – and Cam Jurgens and Kobe Dean, every single one of them was a luxury pick. Not as much Jordan because he had a real role until he got hurt, but still somewhat of a luxury. Now it's deep end of the pool. Those guys not only got to play, but they got to play well, and they got to be big parts in, in their particular roles. Yeah, speaking of those guys, um, Cam Jurgens. Jordan Davis, Nicobe Dean, like you mentioned, those were luxury picks at the time. Uh, they clearly were investments, especially when you consider all the moves the Eagles made in the prior offseason. Um, what's your faith level in those guys? I know you didn't really see too much. I know you didn't see Cam Jurgens really too much at all, except for the preseason and maybe occasional coming in for maybe an injured injured player. If that, um, we saw Nicobe Dean in, in spots, maybe coming in if the Eagles were blowing some teams out. Um, most notably in that Titans game, I think he played maybe a drive or two, accumulated like five or six tackles immediately. Um, and then Jordan Davis, um, I think he's I think he's the one that's under the most pressure, um, especially given the circumstances that the Eagles had to outsource for more talent on the D line um, during the, during you know his injury period and even when he came back, it just seemed like he couldn't really get his footing in the second half of the season. So, what's your faith level uh, in those young guys coming in in season number two for them? <clears throat> um. I'm pretty confident in Jordan, but in a different way than most people, you know, look, I, I said it from day one, when he got drafted, there are certain people who are going to be disappointed by Jordan Davis because of, of his role. And his role is basically to take up blockers to, you know, dummies guide to football. That's his role. And it's not sexy. It's not splashy. Um, you're not going to see a lot of sacks and things like that. <clears throat> but as long as he's on the field and, and doing his role to the level he can do it. And by the way, before he hurt his ankle, he was really ramping up and playing well. The problem and why the Eagles called Linball Joseph is Marlon Tui Pelotu also got hurt, which people forget. And then Marvin Wilson had that opportunity down in Houston and got put on skates. And now he was like, well, I'm not going to have Jordan Davis for a month. I'm not going to have Marlon for the rest of the season. I got to get somebody. And he picked up the phone and he got Linball Joseph. Um, and Dominican Sue 
played a different position. So right. I think people don't realize that, at least some people. But I think Jordan will be fine if he stays healthy in his role. If you're expecting Javon Hargrave's 11 sacks, you're going to be disappointed. So that to me, like Melton Williams has got to step up for Javon Hargrave, not Jordan Davis. Uh, that's Milton Williams' role. Uh, with Cam, he's never played guard before. We all know Jeff Stoutland. He's certainly got the athleticism to pull it off. Is he big enough? Is he strong enough? We're just going to have to see. Same thing with N'Kobe Dean. Very instinctive player, but boy, he's small. So, you know, we're going to see if he can hold up. Um, you know, the game is changing. That helps. You don't have to be that 250 pound downhill linebacker anymore. So that helps Nicobe. Um, but I mean, I don't know how anybody could feel. I think Nicobe played 35 snaps last year. Cam was in the same range, just mop up duty. There's a big difference between 35 and a thousand. That's how many, you know, TJ and starting offensive linemen play. Yeah, which adds more validity to how they let TJ Edwards walk out the door. But uh, on that note, you guys, man, you know, we appreciate you for always locking in on the content. We appreciate you guys for smashing that like button, staying engaged in the comment section. It goes a long way with us, and it just shows that the content is moving, the content is working, and John McMullen's efforts are not for naught. So, uh, you know, we appreciate you guys as always. This has been Football 24-7 with John McMullen. I'm your guy, Tony DeShows the Second on Jacob Sports. We appreciate you guys. One love, stay humble, stay healthy, and most importantly, stay hungry and take care. Go for the pulse and the pools. Go for the ooze and the oz. Go for the bubbles and the bubbly. Go for the story and the stories. Go for the the win. Go to Ocean Casino Resort. Book your trip at theoceanac.com.